extra stuff in the box. Are you yeah. going to start mandating everyone have an extra spare tire? <laughs> well, I'm going to have to have somebody follow them around, make sure they have transportation. But <laughs> Has there been an adjustment for Tyler Bozak under how, what you guys are trying to do uh, with how he's playing the center ice position and just generating offense from that? Uh, I, I don't know if, if that's the case or not, but uh, I think there's a little bit of adjustment for all the sentiment. I mean, that, that's one of the areas where we asked them to make a little bit of a change in, their, in the way they're playing. So I think that's uh, one area that the, the centerman position is the, probably the hardest position other than a goalie. And uh, I think that, you know, there, there's a little bit of a transition for that with them. What would the change be? Well, they're, they're, you know, I require them to come down lower into the zone and not leave the zone, stay lower, be a bit more supportive. I think I, we need them to get back into the zone quicker and come lower to support uh, with the D. So I think that's the biggest area that the, the centerman has, and it takes a lot more work. And I think they're all up to the challenge. It's just getting used to knowing that you have to do it. Peter, you've uh, included Jonathan Bernier in your leadership group meetings, and you've referred to him as a leader. Is that something you think the starting goalie on a team should be in part of the leadership group, or is there something about Bernier himself that you think lends him to that role? <clears throat> well, you know, you never know what uh, the leadership is going to come out of a player. I'd like all my players to show some sort of leadership, but uh, I think it's something, a quality that he has himself. I think he's seen that, be, being coming from L.A. where he was, and and, and uh, the leaders that they had on that team, I think they probably could have had five or six different guys be the captain of that team with the leadership they had. So I think it's a good example, and that's the best way for young players to learn is to, to watch and see what other people are doing around you and how they're showing their leadership. So I think that's a quality that he has. A lot of talk around town about fans cheering for this team now to lose because they want to see the team get a higher draft pick. As a, as a member of this team, is it tough to hear something like I, that? I haven't heard that. I mean, it's, that's just something coming from somewhere. I, the person I heard of it was you saying that right now. But uh, I don't think our fans want us to lose. I think they want us to win. I think that there's always going to be some people upset. But uh, I think they're going to be more and more supportive than ever right now. And uh, we're going to be pushing that much harder. How disappointing is it not to have Dion available? It's hard to have uh, you know leadership group uh, people out of your lineup, and especially somebody that's important. Um, so, you know, we have to deal with that. That's part of the things we talked about the other day. With the when you get adversity, when we we need to get those wins and the results from the wins, you need as much leadership as you can and better players in your lineup to help push through that. And uh, but right now, uh, you know, he's not there, so other people have to pick up the slack and continue to get better in that situation. Is the plan for him to travel with you guys? Tomorrow? Today? Yes. No. Would be, do you think he'd go for Saturday as well? Or is that to be no, I mean, we're still hopeful. I mean, uh, it's, it's a, you know, progresses on its own. You know, it's hard to tell. There's no exact science to when and how quickly. It's a tough situation for him, uh, you know, and where it is. And he has to put a lot of pressure on that. So, you know, we just have to wait to see when he's ready. And we're hopeful. And uh, if it's not, then we'll go the next day. So. You know, one goal against the Devils last week, Peter. What can you do differently tomorrow night to make that uh, increase on that point? Well, I think the the same idea that we had with Nashville, you know, spending more people towards the net and getting more traffic there, staying at that net. Uh, I think we had we outchanced them pretty well, but we didn't get any goals. So I think if we can put more traffic and get more people in front of them, create second chances and screens and and, that, and like we, we wanted to start to do, and I saw some good examples of it against Nashville. I think that will help the situation. Plus, you know, your power play has to get going. When you go through a slump like this, there's obviously rumors that are going to swirl around about trades and, and moves that the team should make. Um, how do you keep that out of the dressing room? When people are talking you about know, I, <clears throat> we, we just continually tell them that, to worry about what you can control. We can't control what, what is going to be said or what's going to be in that situation. All we can control is the support and preparation we do in the room and how hard we're going to be working on the ice. So. I'm asking them to work harder and, and to be prepared, and uh, and that's all we can control. You know, it's it's not that they're not ever going to read it or look at it, but you you can't do anything about it. So there's no sense putting um, part of your day into worrying about something like that when all it can do is affect your game in the long run. If things continue to go the way they're going, do you anticipate big moves before the trade deadline? I, you know, I've been around the game long enough. There's always trades. There's always movement. Uh, uh, that's up to Dave Nonis and, and the group, and if they decide to do something, then we'll deal with it.
prosecutor in Nashville, you didn't have a prototypical number one center. And then in yeah. Florida, you would have had a couple of young guys in yeah. Chicago and yeah. just at, uh, up the middle. How difficult is it to really run an offense when you know, you're locking you know, those kind of players up the middle? Well, you know, you, you, you try to start to rely a little bit on the collective and the lines to, you know, work better together. In Nashville, we really didn't have, you know, the, like you say, prototypical, the, the Getzlavs, the Kopitars, and, you know, that kind of, but you, you can work well together and your work ethic and your approach to the game can be can be uh, strong. So, you know, we had some success there in Florida, as you said. We had two young guys who, you know, will be, I think, those kind of players when they get older. But, uh, um, you know, you just have to work with, with your lines and how you're going to play and, and just get everybody to get on the best situation as we can by uh, playing a better team game. Peter, have you seen some light from Conway or are you still kind of searching? I think that uh, in Nashville, you know, one of the areas we just have to get into the zone and get set up better. I mean, you're spending too much time not coming up with speed and not entering the zone and getting possession. I mean, if, if a team like Nashville is going to stay up on the line, you can't turn pucks over. It's going to have to go in. If you have to soft chip it or dump it, you're going to have to do that. And you're going to have to retrieve it. And that, that takes work. And the most best thing on a power play is to get in and get set as quickly as possible so you can spend your time on creating chances. And, Usually when we're in there, we're getting some sort of chances or getting something from it, but uh, getting it up and getting set is, is the main thing for me with it. Is that partly an adjustment with the different point men, or is that just something? I think sort of a little bit of that and a little bit of understanding what your opponent's going to do. Um, you know, New Jersey plays different than Nashville, and you have to be prepared for what they're going to do and how they're going to approach the game. And But it's an important factor because it can change momentum. Peter, have you decided on how you're going to handle the goalies uh, this weekend? I'm going to have them decided on both games. I'm just going to play it and see what happens. And then uh, when we get to the second game, we'll, we'll make decisions as we go day to day. Uh, Cody and Roman face any sort of punishment, fun or otherwise? Or well, they'll they... get fined. I mean, when you're late, you're late. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no sense. Uh, you can't control those things. But uh, that's just part of the, the game. I think Bob's been fined a few times. <laughs> As a coach, is that a funny, like, I guess they call it spot? And it well, you could you like see the guys the way they react. We talked about it. I mean, they were stranded out there, and there's no spare, and and tow trucks wouldn't come, and maybe those are the guys who are mad. Who's the one that said that? Well, fans. Oh, oh he's he gone. <laughs> maybe he was one of those guys, I think. <laughs> but, uh, to you? Stranded like that? No, I mean, uh, something happened or? no. Usually, when you your car situation, there's a dealership in town that you got your car from. I would just be calling them and say, "Come get me," but uh, <laughs> or a tow truck or something. But um, I'd probably just leave it on the side of the road to have somebody pick me up. But.